Can we I were... ask you a question about Eagle? Sure. When you were there, let me ask you this: because sometimes uh, in the world, I was in L.A. and right. when I was in L.A., I mean, countrywide, New Century. You remember? New, you remember these guys? Yeah, yeah. Guys are making four, five hundred, six hundred thousand dollars per month is what they're making, and it's no income, no assets, creative financing. You know, don't worry about it. Everyone's got a 720, 740, all this other stuff. Some of the guys that did it right came from a place that taught the right habits. Some of the guys that picked up the bad habits came from a place that was very normal to have the bad habits. Would you say you picked up some of those bad habits from being at Eagle? Or even prior to that, you kind of figured out some creative ways to make money, even as a kid in high school or coming out of high school? Yeah, I know. I, I, I really didn't. It was, it was definitely at at Eagle, and it started with the uh, with my the, the manager of the store, and she was she was making money. She was closing loans. I was desperate to make money. I was desperate not to end up living in my parents' spare room, uh, and and I just slowly it just it just started creeping up on me. Mm. Before you knew it, it was just all consuming. I mean, I, I you know, and and look, I enjoyed it. The, the fact of the matter is, is that you know, getting over on somebody on the on the banking industry on an underwriter and kind of faking them out or something. It, 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 there's a certain, um, I guess, perverse pleasure in that. You know, you start you feel good, you feel smart, you feel sharp. Like, wow, I you know, really did something. The loan closes, you make a chunk of money, and it just it just ex, it just got bigger and bigger, expanded mm-hmm. from there. And of course, my brokers are all doing it now. And and there's so many people in the industry. Subprime was so corrupt at the time. Even when we got caught, and we got caught all the time, I got caught with a couple million dollars from a bank one time. Talked to the guy, um, it was um, Pinnacle Bank Corp out of Chicago. Talked to the owner, he called me up, he's like, look, we've got, clearly this is fraud. We pulled all these files, we got a couple million dollars. We, they'd already sold a million to Household Bank. And I'm sitting there saying, look, if, if you're trying to tell me that you want me to buy back two million dollars, that's not gonna happen. So we need to come up with another solution here. And he goes, okay, well, nobody wants, look, he goes, nobody wants the FBI digging through their files. He goes, so if we're going to go ahead and sell this million to household in a, in, a, in a sale next week. So if any of them come back on us, just promise you'll help us get rid of them. And I was like, of course. The likelihood that they were going to catch that fraud two months or three months later was, it was very unlikely. So, of course, that sold. And, and I mean, I got caught multiple times. It, it eventually... Um, you know, eventually a broker that had worked for me got caught and committing fraud. And she wore a wire, she and her husband wore a wire on me because they knew I had been doing fraud. And they got me to admit things on, you know, on tape. And so the FBI came in, they, they said, look, we're going to indict you. And so they indicted me. Well, they actually, I waived the indictment, it doesn't matter. You know, essentially they, they said, you plead guilty to this fraud and you lose your mortgage company. And so I said, okay, I mean, by that point, I think when the FBI came in, which was at a later time, they said that the mortgage company, they, they estimated it had done like 40 million in bad loans over the course of like two or three years. Uh, but those, that doesn't mean that that's loss. It just means that you got a $200,000 loan that you shouldn't have gotten. Mm-hmm. And they're saying that's a bad loan. That's, that's $200,000 in bad loans. Well. You made the payments, or maybe you didn't. I don't know, but it's about they estimate around forty million. So at that point, at that point, I, uh, you know, I should have claimed bankruptcy. Should have moved in with mom and dad, but I've got, I've got bills. I don't want to take a step back, so I decided to go ahead and, and escalate the fraud, and I decided to start flipping houses in an area of of Tampa known as uh, Ebor City, Tampa Heights area. I don't know if you're familiar with it's it. It's a nice area. It's not a nice area. Okay. It's a nice area now. It, it's a nicer area now. It yeah. was a low-income area I'm, at the I'm, time. I don't, I, I don't know 05, 04. I'm yeah. talking today. So. Today, it's a nicer yeah. area. Yes. At the time, it was rough. It was rough. I mean, the median house, the median house in that area was probably worth fifty to sixty thousand dollars. Got it. So I go in and I start buying up houses. The problem with buying those houses is that the people that live in those areas don't, they don't have good credit. They don't have their down payments. You know, they quit their job a week before the loan closes. And so you're, you're struggling against your buyers. So what I decided was that if I could get around the buyer somehow to borrow the money against the houses, which, which meant I had to start creating the buyers. So I started creating my own buyers. Mm. 
and uh, creating synthetic identities. And I figured out how to get Social Security to issue Social Security numbers to people that didn't exist. And, uh, That's and they were, pretty creative right there. Yeah, it was, it was, it was you know, I want to say it was difficult, but it was, it was really a lot of phone calls, and it was just coming up with the documents, and it wasn't, it was complicated, but it wasn't, once I got the system down, it wasn't that hard. It, Social Security will issue a Social Security number to a child under the age of 12, 12 months old, without the child being present. So all you have to do as the parent is show up with the birth certificate and the shot record. And you say, my child was born, I never got a social security number issued, and they'll issue a, a social security number to a child who's 10 months old without seeing the child. And of course, I would go in using a fake ID. And they would check the computer and they'd go, you're right. This child exists, but we don't have a social security number for him. We will issue the social security number and they mail it to you. So then I would go with that social security number. I would then order three secured credit cards, make the payments for six months, and suddenly I have 600 and 690 credit scores, you know, 650, 710 credit scores. So I've got this perfect synthetic individual that can now buy my houses for 40 grand. So I'm buying a house for 40 grand. The problem is I would clean it up a little bit, and even if I sold it at top dollar for 60 or 70, I'm making 30 grand, 25 grand. That's not worth it. So the, the issue is you need to borrow more. I needed to borrow more money mm -hmm. in this synthetic individual name. So I need to get the houses to appraise higher. So I was dating a girl at, the title, at a title company, and she explained to me how, how sales were recorded. And of course, do you know anything about appraisals? You probably know. Which some, part? Well, uh, like to appraise a house. Yeah, of For, course I know what, uh, yeah, right. sure. You need an appraisal. Well, yes. the way they gauge the value of the home is they look and they find three other comparable sales in the area mm -hmm. within one mile mm -hmm. with, that have sold within one year. And so what I did was I said, okay, well, if I'm trying to sell this house for 150000 I can't get an appraisal unless I can find comparable sales. And she explained that, look, if you pay the extra doc stamps on the, on the sale, those recordings will not go for, they won't record at 50, they'll record at 150 or 200. If you pay an extra $700, it, put, it adds 100000 to it. So now I'm buying houses for 50 and I'm recording the value at 150 or 200. And I'm doing it all over the place in the name of synthetic and individual. Individuals don't exist. And this was the dumbest part, is that I'm naming these guys James Red, Brandon Green, Michael White, Lee Black. Reservoir Dogs. Yeah, Reservoir Dogs. Just, I mean, and I thought it was so clever. I, I really did. <laughs> you know, you always think you're clever until the judge is looking at you going, you know, what, what are you doing? You just suddenly you realize, okay, that was a jackass move. My bad.